Um, welcome to the Des Plaines Public Library. Tonight's program is Vaping, the New Teen Epidemic. My name is Gwen. I work in reference here. And I'm very pleased to welcome Terry Collins, who runs the Maine Community Youth Assistance Foundation, also known by its acronym MCAF, and John Palicki, a special education learning professional. And take it away, please, Terry. Okay. Thank you, Gwen. Hi, everybody. So tonight we're gonna go over some of the basics of vaping, and what we'll do is we'll cover kind of the how and what, and then, um, you know, if you have questions, we can either save them for the end or we can do it. it. You know, you could just ask questions as we go on too, if you want. Okay, so a lot of people don't realize, but the history of vaping, vaping was actually um, developed by a, a guy named, patented by a guy named Gilbert. In, uh, in 1965, and it, it basically was a way of using moisturized nicotine, and um, it was basically a, it, um, a moist uh, nicotine delivery system. But what happened, nobody was interested in it, it just fell apart, nobody, nobody did anything with it, and it was abandoned. But then in uh, 2006, uh, Han Lick in China, he um, developed a uh, basically a battery charge device that um, he developed with the best of intentions because he saw his father die of lung cancer. And he, he really, uh, when people think of that, and this is what I wanna um, say for a minute, that you know when people think about is something better or worse, is vaping better or worse than regular cigarettes, one thing that vaping doesn't have is the combustion factor, so all that black soot of burning something, right? So that's what Han Lick thought when he developed the original electronic cigarette was he was gonna take away that black tar that came from burning. And so um, he thought that's what caused the lung cancer and so that's why he invented the um, electronic cigarette. And then just a little more, um, a little later, two Stanford grads uh, developed Juul, which is the uh, largest, um, popular item now, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So there are all kinds of vaping devices, but there's basically, um, John Moon could talk, we've got, we've got some of the older um, devices, but they all have this in common. They have a battery, they have a chamber and a mouthpiece, and a battery, right, a, a ignition thing for the battery. So there's an on-off switch, Heat the battery heats up, heats the liquid, and then they take it in their mouth and, and suck it in and then blow it out. So this is an older device, and there used to be really big um, boxes. There used to be called like vape boxes. Mm -hmm. They were maybe this high. But what that was is that the um, battery was that big. And they're also, they used to blow up. That was, in fact, some of these will still be set on fire if there's a malfunction in the battery. But basically, all vaping devices are now battery powered. So it truly is a technology. It's a technology, a battery technology, that basically involves heating up a nicotine solution and vaporizing it or making it into a, um, um, an aerosol, and then which delivers it to your mouth, goes into your lungs, and you, you spew it out. So there's all kinds of vaping devices, and you can come up and look at these when, after the presentation, too. This has a little bit of the history of um, vaping, too, in the sense that, you know, when they first developed this, they thought people were gonna um, like this because they were coming from smoking. So they said, well, we'll make the electronic cigarette look just like smoking. So they made this, but what they found out was that's not really, wasn't cool. That was not the coolest thing. So then they made a little bit bigger cigarettes. Well, then they made things like hookah. They called this a hookah pen. And really all it is, it's an electronic cigarette that has some, uh, a flavor on it, and it looks like a marker that would be in a fourth grader's um, pencil case, because I actually got one of these from a fourth grader, believe it or not. And um, she said, oh, look at this pen. I said, this is not a pen. This is, this is a vaping device, and that's how our teacher learned. But, um, so we have these, and then what happened is, you know, we have several of the different kinds of um, 
electronic devices, and each one has a, a, a brand name. It has, it's identified in the business place. And then what happened with these guys from Stanford said, hey, let's, I, I have an even better idea. We're gonna make something that's really slick, technically. It looks pretty cool, you know? This is the Jewel, J-U-U-L. And this is an amazing, I mean, it really is kind of a cool um, technical thing. Maybe I use that one, John. But, um, this one, here you can show that one. Sure. This is um, the battery, and here's a pod. The liquid goes in here, it's called a pod. And this is amazing because it has a magnetic holder and an, basically a USB port, which can be charged inside of your computer. So imagine this, a high school student, you know, puts this in, their teachers think that it's a USB port. They don't realize that it was a, a vaping device. And so it's only been over time that we've been able to identify some of these. But it's pretty, it is a pretty slick um, type of design. You can see that um, from the Jewel, just like Jewel, you'll hear it on, um, on commercials and stuff too, like, People talk about jeweling, or I, you know, this I jeweled, but they, basically they're taking a brand name and making it a verb or a noun. So it, it's like kind of like Kleenex was to tissue. You know, we we, you know, I have a Kleenex, but it's a tissue. Well, jewel is is a brand name, but people will use it as a I'm jeweling, or do you have a jewel? And there's all kinds of other brands. There's this brand. This is called a bow, same exact thing though. A magnetic charger, stick it in. But you know what the difference is? The difference is, is they have a, a, longer, a longer pod and a different uh, curve to it. But that's all driven by patents, right? I mean, patent, this is a business and they can't have the same design as Jewel, so they designed it a little differently and here you have a bow. So you'll see all kinds of different type of, of um, sleek vape, vaping devices. And in fact, this um, e-liquid pod cover, you see that? Does that look like anything to you? Anybody? It's up in the, the one on top. Oh yeah, oh, a photo corner. Yeah, it could be that. Or it also, the other thing that we thought it was, we thought they were flash drive covers. But one time in the, in the gar I was watching the guy um, pick up garbage and I thought, why are there 50 flash drive covers on the ground? But it was the top of these pots. So when you finish, this is equivalent to a pack of cigarettes. So if you finish that, you know, they put this in, it heats up through here, and then that's the mouthpiece. So, that's, that's where, why you see those little plastic pieces all over the, the ground now, is because people are throwing that out. And you could see the rechargeable battery part in there and the heating element. It's a little cord, little uh, metal tube that goes down through the pod in there and then, um, and then they just suck on it and you, you'll get the aerosol. The next thing to know about are the vape juice and the, or e-juice. They'll call it um, different, they'll have uh, mostly vape juice, e-juice, electronic cigarette juice. But what's very um, interesting about this is that virtually all of them are flavored. And they have flavors like apple juice. Here, let me read this one. Candy King Sour Worms on Ice. That was really, I always think about that and say, well, that wasn't uh, meant to be devoured by adults. <laughs> I mean, sandy, uh, sour worms on ice, it's look pretty crazy. Here's one, there's watermelon, there's uh, divine clouds, there's passion pomegranate. So there's all kinds, here's a donut, and this is pretty, um, I don't think it smells like donuts at all, but it's a pure marketing thing. 
But this one has six milligrams of nicotine in it, and this has 12 milligrams of nicotine in it. And we'll talk about um, the labels in a minute. But these things are flavored, and they have stuff like Captain Crunch, cotton candy, uh, popcorn. They have all these different flavors that are actually geared toward kids, which is uh, one of the problems. So in the, um, these vaping liquids, there's four main ingredients. There's nicotine, propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, and flavoring, which with have preservatives in it. And what I'll do is go through each one of these to kind of give you a feel for what that is. Okay, nicotine. Nicotine is a chemical. It's lethal. And it, um, I mean, nicotine, you'll see a skull and bones on it. If you have a bottle of pure nicotine, it, it literally is, um, is a lethal chemical compound. And um, there's only so much that you can take. In fact, 10, 10 milligrams of nicotine is lethal to a small pet or a child. But the biggest reason that we're interested in not putting it out for kids is their brains. Nicotine affects your brain. You know, the whole addiction cycle, the whole, and I won't get into the chemistry of addiction, but suffice it to say that um, it affects your brain. And if you look at this, the teenage brain is not developed. You know, your brain doesn't develop until you're about 25. And if you look at this, this um, gradation, you can see at age five, you have major portions of your brain. Not the size of your brain. The size of your brain is pretty much the same. But when you look going out, you see the green and red and kind of light blue areas. Those are the areas that aren't developed yet. So when you look from five to 20, you still have some major um, development to go through and the, this part of your brain, which is the um, prefrontal cortex, which has to do with rational thought, planning, um, executive functioning. So a lot of the, um, the uh, adult functions of the brain are in that area. And if you use um, drugs or any kind of chemicals, it will affect that area of your brain. The other thing is that nicotine has a tremendous amount of side effects. And we don't, a lot of people don't know that nicotine is as addictive as heroin. The mechanism may be um, the same, but it, it doesn't get you high like um, heroin or THC, but there is a pleasure associated with it. And all this stuff is still being studied. As we understand the brain more, there's a lot more information that's gonna be coming. But the side effects of nicotine are major in the sense that it affects your cardiovascular system, it affects your um, pulmonary system, you can cause joint pains, it can cause, um, you know, in your lungs, it can cause uh, bronchospasm, it can also um, cause high blood pressure, it can cause um, your face to get really red, you can get nauseous. A lot of kids, um, a lot of kids, that's probably the first thing they see, because kids, what they do when they take a uh, vape, and they're passing this around. You know, an adult might take a hit off of the vape, put it down, and not use it for maybe another hour, maybe two. But a kid, what the kids do, and every single kid confirms it with me, is they take a hit, pass it to their thing, they get their friend, and they go around in a circle till the thing's done. So here they're vaping watermelon or doing whatever, and they're using, that's a whole pack of cigarettes, sometimes in less than 10 minutes. Well, if you smoke a whole pack of cigarettes in less than 10 minutes, even if it's between three people, and you're 12 or 14, you're gonna get sick. And in fact, that's what happens, is that you'll see kids get nauseous, kids get headaches, they get um, uh, dizzy, they can actually even lose on, uh, consciousness, and you know, get, um, you know, just kind of uh, queasy in their head. And a lot of kids will, what I've seen most is that they throw up. So that's, that's probably the biggest thing. And the, the whole um, idea of nicotine is just that um, from the pods, you know, it's different than when we burn cigarettes. When we burn cigarettes, 
Nicotine was about 4% of a, of a tobacco leaf, right? Because it had other alkaloids in it and other plant materials, it has fibers and uh, acotinine and all these other different alkaloids. Well, when you have a, a liquid of nicotine juice, it's about 10% nicotine and 90% oil. And the challenge of that is um, that's pretty potent. I mean, that's, it's not nicotine that's diluted with all the other chemicals. It's pretty straight nicotine. So what happens is that, um, that that's a worry. When kids are vaping it, it's a stronger type of, of hit that they're getting than when they smoke a cigarette. The next thing is with propylene glycol and glycerin, a lot, of, a lot of people are under the misinformation that these are harmless because they're approved as food ingredients. But I will tell you, they're not approved to be taken in your lungs. They're liquids. Your lungs were made to breathe air. So, you know, it doesn't make any sense that when you, you're taking a hit off of a, a jewel or off of a vaping pen, the stuff goes in as a liquid and it condenses, or an aerosol, right, a vapor, it goes in, it starts as a liquid, the battery heats it up, it goes in as a vapor aerosol, but then part of it, you don't blow all of it out, some of it condenses in your lungs. So these compounds that um, propylene glycol and glycerin are easily oxidized chemicals which can form carcinogenic um, compounds. And those are things that are well studied because of the, um, because of the chemical industry, but they can cause throat irritation. In fact, um, one time I get, was given a talk and this mom said, you know, my son, I, I've taken him to all these different throat specialists. We can't figure out what's the matter with it and with him. And he, um, it turns out the kid is vaping. He, he went to like three or four throat specialists and they couldn't figure out what was the matter with his throat, what was from vaping. I mean, he was developing an infection in the back of his throat. It was really bad irritation. And that's, that's what it was from. So this stuff is real. It's a, it's a real chemical process. My favorite story of that was when the one dad said to one of our other speakers, well, if it burned your throat, why would you do it? And our other speaker said, because I knew it worked. So the burn, he knew he was actually inhaling what he wanted to inhale. So he liked the burn. Yeah, that's, and that's what they'll say when you ask kids, well, why do you, why do, you do something with a stronger chemical, because I like it. It's a better, better high, which is hard to understand. Here's the other thing to realize too. Even if a vape oil has no nicotine, it is still dangerous. It's still dangerous because you're vaporizing this oil and basically what's happening is it goes into your lungs and it will go to the bottom of your lungs as because it'll sink. And then when it sinks at the bottom, you'll see, um, there is a condition known as popcorn lung, but let me show you this, this picture. What will happen is the, um, it'll go down to your alveoli, and what will happen is you have a high uh, opportunity for infection because you've got this gunk sitting at the bottom of your lungs, and so you have all this junk going on, and that's one of the things that they're finding is that people who are vaping more get pneumonia. And if I go back to this one, there's a story um, about the Orville Redenbacher company. They have a, um, they had a problem with their employee base and they were all having, um, they, basically what was happening is they were having pulmonary issues. They were having asthma and um, wheezing and all these different issues. They couldn't figure out why. And it was hitting almost all of their employees. And what happened was that they found out they traced it to the popcorn flavoring. And the popcorn flavoring was such a high concentration in their plant that they were the employees were breathing it in, and the flavoring was settling at the bottom of their alveoli, and as a result, was resulted in a condition known as bronchiolitis obliterans, which they have coined popcorn lung. And what um, the school of thought is right now is that all of these flavorings, because they're similarly chemical, um, the chemicals structures are similar, that they can do the same thing. So this idea of causing um, bronchitis and pneumonia is not unreasonable from this stuff. The, um, 
this will be, let's see, this, I just want to mention this, and then we're going to go and go back through some of this, um, this equipment and the, some of the labeling, because um, I want John to uh, tell you his stories. He has great stories on this stuff. The, um, the next thing, just to let you know, put this on your radar, is that vaping is also used for marijuana that this is something that is coming, it's already out there, it's called dabbing, or um, some, some of the people you can see over there, that's what, um, it's an extract, so marijuana is the plant, and you can get this extract, the oil inside of it, which is basically THC, you can get it by pressing, pressing marijuana between two plates at high pressure, and you squeeze the oil out, or you can get it by um, spraying butane gas, which is you know, condensed um, butane liquid on it, and it, it draws out the organic stuff out of the marijuana, and it'll drip out yellow, depending on how pure it is, and, or brown, and you'll see all those different types of compounds. Those are all basically THC. That's all basically highly concentrated THC. And when um, marijuana is legalized in the state of Illinois, which it appears that it's coming, this is going to be a big deal because these this is going to be available, and I think our teenagers are going to be able to have it too. And what happens is that you can vape marijuana or vape THC, and because it's such a high potency, it's not your grandpa's weed. That's not what's getting approved. It's really high potency THC. And um, there's a lot of side effects associated with that that we'll talk about in a little bit. But I wanted you to see that this stuff, you know, this whole technology of having batteries, heating up a liquid to an aerosol, that's really what we're looking at. We're looking at a technology that can be applied to all kinds of chemicals. Our next one is, um, this is, you'll see these. One like this. This is a, an example of a um, vape pen that has marijuana in it or THC. This is they put the yellow, they put the um, extract in here, and then basically the battery heats it up, and then you just smoke it like that. The other. Um, big issue relative to kids is that four out of five kids who started a tobacco product started it because it was flavored. And that's why the FDA has been such a, it's been kind of um, preaching about flavored e-juices because kids use flavored e-juices. Do you think that this candy cane, sour worms, do you think that that's being marketed to us? No, it's being marketed to kids. Kids, kids are the ones that are going to do this. So really, I mean, when you look at this and you say the tobacco industry has a kid's menu, that's really, that's how they're doing it. The other, um, just to show you the parallels, look at the um, commercial, More Doctors Smoke Camels. This is something from 1960s. More Doctors Smoke Camels than any other cigarette. This was something that was highly um, publicized. You know, doctors recommended Camels, they smoked in their office. I had, I had a doctor who smoked when I was having an asthma attack. And I thought that was pretty weird, but even at 10, I was like, I don't think you should be doing that. But they did. Everybody smoked. They smoked in the hospitals. They smoked in schools. They had a smoking lounge. In my, in my high school, there was a smoking lounge for juniors and seniors. And when you would go in to look at the um, teacher's lounge, there'd be smoke just billowing out of the bottom of the... Uh, of the um, door. So the smoking was just absolutely pervasive. You know, you go to the Cubs game, a hockey game, anywhere, there was just smoking everywhere. In the plane, you know, when you'd walk in the back of the plane, you'd swear the back of it was on fire because everything, you couldn't even see it, and it would smell so much. But, you know, you think about what happened with this, and you look at the commercials, and you look, hey, you know, look at this, not one single case of throat irritation with camels. What do we know about that now? We know that that's not true, right? 
But that's what they were advertising. And here's another one, blow in her face and she'll follow you anywhere. I mean, that's, a, that's an incredible, uh, incredible um, advertisement, right? And when I show the kids this, they're like, oh, I can't believe somebody would do that. But I just want you to take a look at the next slide. You look at this, in the bottom corner, that is a jewel ad, an ad for one of these vape pens. This Marlboro Beat is an ad from 1960s. Do they look alike or what? I mean, this is just, uh, uh, this is what amazes me. And you look in the corner, as seen on TV, there you show a teenager vaping. Over there, experience the breakthrough. Okay, I threw the one on the top, kids want candy and the tobacco industry wants customers. That's basically what it is. And this one is my favorite. This one, this one has a blue, this is, their, this is an ad, a real life ad for blue cigarettes. And basically what they're saying is to the smoking ban, you know, the, that you can't smoke, it says take back your freedom to smoke anywhere with blue electronic cigarettes. Blue produces no smoke and no ash, only vapor, making it the smarter alternative to regular cigarettes. It's the most satisfying way to tell the smoking bans to kiss off. Okay, maybe the second most satisfying way. But my point is that these are real, real ads and, and we're looking at what um, kind of like, I, I wanna say a repeat of what we had and, and my final slide here is really not to make the kids the guinea pig generation of another episode of Big Tobacco Meets Big Weed and vaping. Because what's happening, this is all about money. Altria, who is uh, the Philip Morris Marlboro cigarette um, concern, just bought shares of Juul, which is a, um, is projected to be a $5 billion company by 2023. So we're not talking pennies. This is big bucks and marijuana coming in is another huge industry. And so the whole thing about this is um, it's not just a, oh, hey, let's go get high and feel good. This is about real money. And it's about really trying to, um, to you know, get tax revenue off of it, to get all this stuff, but at the sake of our children's health. Because a lot of these questions haven't um, had the studies that need to be done. And so when we look at that, we really need to have you know, more studies done and more um, information so our kids aren't the guinea pig. And um, with that, I, I'd like to kind of just uh, step back because I wanted to give you the overview of the presentation. And now I'm gonna let John talk and um, we're gonna go over some of these different devices and take any questions too. So kind of when I talk, it if you guys have something that you would like to share or ask, please do, because mine is very um, conversational. I, Dr. Collins knows way more about the science than I'll ever know, but um, just a few interesting things. So just now I vaped. Did everybody see me? You didn't see that in my watch? You didn't see me vape just now? That's how tricky it can get. A lot of times I've seen where kids, what do kids wear very often in the winter? They wear hooded sweatshirts. And in a hoodie, it's real easy to just slide this in my hoodie right here. You can't see me. How many times have you ever seen a kid walk like this? You don't know what they're doing in there. It could just be that they're cold, but it could also mean that they just vaped, which does happen. Because with the vape, it's not like regular smoking and that there's mostly no odor. So you may never know. The only thing that you will see and that you've probably seen is the huge clouds. The huge clouds is a big giveaway. So a couple of things. Dr. Collins talked about nicotine poisoning. I once had a student that um, was throwing up pretty badly and he was throwing up red. And when you throw up red, what does everybody think you're doing? You're throwing up blood. But what happened was he was throwing up nicotine juice because he had taken the entire bottle in one sitting, his body reacted, and he was throwing up red. But he didn't tell his mom that, so his mom thought, he's throwing up blood, time to call the ambulance. 
So the ambulance came. He went in the ambulance. He went to the emergency room. And the emergency room doctor said, this isn't blood. This is liquid. What did you do? He said, oh, I took the entire bottle of vape juice and inhaled it and then puked. Needless to say, mom wasn't very happy with the ER bill after that, but they all figured it out. Um, something that I often get asked is, well, how would my kid buy this? My kid can't buy this. If you've ever bought or had someone buy you a Visa gift card, a Discover gift card, a MasterCard gift card, American Express gift card, and used it, you can buy anything you want. And when you go on a vape site, what do they ask you? Are you 18? Check the box. I'm 18. Send it to my house. Here's my, here's my Visa card that grandma bought me for Christmas. I just bought myself a vape. So it's not necessarily that difficult to buy. And it doesn't mean that you're a bad parent if your child buys a vape. It just means that there's ways around it. Just like there was ways around it when I was a kid, when everybody in the audience was a kid. That's just how it works. Um, I, something that I noticed when I first started doing this, as Dr. Collins said, was these little, these little pods. And a lot of our students had Chromebooks and would just stick this in your Chromebook. Well, if you don't know what this is, to me in the very beginning, I just thought it was flash drive. Every kid's got a flash drive of some kind. Now that there's like Google Drive and all that stuff, it's less and less. But in that time, I didn't know what this was. So be mindful of what things look like. As Dr. Collins said, this is not supposed to look like this. Not supposed to look like this. It's supposed to be sleek. I'm supposed to be able to hide it in here. I'm supposed to be able to do it without you noticing. I had a student the other day tell me when they were talking about this, and she was a sixth grade student, and she said, man, my mom vapes in the movie theater. I yelled at her, but they, she did it anyway. So a lot of times I'm starting to realize that parents don't even realize really how bad this is. The other thing that kids will do is decorate their jewel because they're, they're all over that, and they all look the same. So kids will decorate it and you might see something like this that has, this kid happened to put you know, jewels on it. But um, they might put initials on it or do whatever. But it'll look like a flash drive that's been decorated. So that's, that's another thing that you'll see. The, the other thing that is pretty brand new is this single-use um, vape. So now what's happening is you'll see this thrown all over the fields. This is uh, mint. This one is mint. But you'll see it, this one is called a stick. And kids, oh, we got it off the kids. They, so they're using it. You know, I think, too, a lot of times um, if you ask a kid, do you vape, they may say no. But then you say, do you use your jewel? Well, yeah. Wait, what? It's the same thing. But they're not viewing it as the same thing. They're not viewing it as an electronic cigarette. They're viewing it as a jewel. Uh, Dr. Collins kind of talked to the brand name. I always think of, like, when you wear shoes, when you buy gym shoes, what does every kid want for gym shoes? They want Jordans or they want Nikes. Well, Jewel's kind of like the fancy brand. That's, that's what kids want. They want the name fancy brand. It's a way of status, just like anything else was when we were growing up. For me, because I was an athlete, it was always I wanted the best pair of Jordans I could find. But for kids, you know, sometimes the Jewel is the brand name. The other thing I wanted to talk about really quickly is the marijuana oil. Um, it's, very, it's very easy to buy now. It's much, much easier than it has been. It's much more prevalent than it has been. Um, but the thing, that, the thing that scared me when Dr. Collins first started talking about the butane gas, when I think of butane gas, I think of lighting a barbecue grill. And then when she started talking about it, I thought to myself, Imagine me taking the barbecue grill lighter fluid and drinking it. Well, of course, that would make me sick. But what the kids don't understand is when I pour it over the bud of marijuana, not only am I getting the vape oil, I'm still getting the butane in it. So I'm in a way, now I'm inhaling butane with the marijuana. 
So it, it, it's, they're not thinking it all the way through. Well, and the other thing is this is very prevalent. You can go to a vape store and buy a can of butane, and it's, it had a bumblebee picture on it because they call it BHO, and what they, it's butane hash oil. And so you take this, um, this can of, um, of butane, and the reason they use butane is when they pour it on the, on the marijuana, it, it's supposed to evaporate right away because it's extremely flammable. Well, there have been explosions across the United States of places who have been manufacturing this um, hash oil because they've been using all this butane. Well, now when you fill up an apartment full of butane, all you have to do is flick a, a light on and the apartment can um, explode. And so you'll see this in some of um, some different areas of the country where there have been massive explosions in apartment complexes and they couldn't understand it. And then they'd find 40 cans of butane. And it's because they were manufacturing this. The other thing I wanted to share um, is just something that I, I learned through working with students and um, is anybody that's a parent, there's a, if, if you find yourself having a difficult time talking to a teenager about this, just like with anything, you don't want to talk about your, to your teenager about birds and the bees or drug use or because they don't want to talk to you about that. But sometimes understand that the more uncomfortable they are, the more you can keep, you should keep talking. They may pretend like they don't hear you, but they hear you. The other thing I wanted to bring up is if, if you feel like you want a way to help your teenage son or daughter out of a bad situation, this is what I like to share with people. You have what's called a signal, and your signal can be as easy as anytime they find themselves in a situation they don't want to be in, have them send you a text message that just says, yell at me. So let's say they're at their friend's house and there's something going on and they don't want to be there anymore because they think it's a bad situation. They'll send you the text, yell at me. You call their phone and you immediately start yelling at them about anything. It could be about anything you want to make up. And when they get off the phone, rather than just walking out, they can save face and say, sorry guys, my mom's really mad. She's coming to pick me up right now. Oh my God, she is so mad, she's on her way. That way, they got out of the situation and they saved face with their friends, not saying, man guys, I don't think this is a good idea. So it's just something that I like to offer any parents or people that have kids. It's just a way to have a little system with your kids of, hey, if you ever find yourself in this situation, no judgment from me, just send me that text that says yell at me. You can call them about anything, not cutting the grass, not cleaning the room, not being home on time, whatever. And it's just a good way to get your son or daughter out of a situation they don't want to be in. I, I just wish that we could do a better job of educating people to the hazards of it. And hopefully tonight's seminar is, is doing that to just educate people to think about what they're putting in their lungs or putting in their bodies because I feel like we're repeating this whole issue that we saw with cigarettes. And I, I'm not saying that we know all the answers. There still has to be studies, more studies done. But there certainly looks like there are indications to do that we are just repeating ourselves. And that, you know, if you just think about the basic tenet of the whole thing, your lungs weren't made to take in water or take in vapor. You know, they're, they're made to breathe air. And so just, you know, even some of the little kids understand that. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, I get it, you know. But, but it's something that we really need to do a better job as a society educating, you know, both kids and parents on this. And I hope, I hope tonight that you got a chance to learn some of that. Mm -hmm.